Hola, eh, buenos días a todos. Eh, mi nombre es José Antonio Martínez, soy el coordinador de Tecnología de la Información de la Universidad de Almería. Y, en primer lugar, quiero disculpar al rector de la Universidad de Almería por no poder asistir a este acto. Su apretada agenda de inicio de curso le impide estar aquí. Me manda un saludo para vosotros y que os encontréis cómodos en la Universidad de Almería. Bienvenido a este congreso LibreOffice 2019 y, a continuación, tiene la palabra eh, Marina. Well. I am really honored to officially open uh, uh, this uh, new edition of our annual meeting. Uh, this year we are hosted by the University of uh, Almeria uh, in this uh, pretty modern and well-equipped uh, university campus. Uh, also, considering our uh, mission, uh, our educational mission, uh, let me say thanks uh, to the university uh, for giving us the opportunity to organize our uh, community meetings here with uh, teachers and students uh, uh, around. Uh, it's uh, always wonderful to see community members uh, joining the conference from uh, several continents and countries and we are all glad to clearly see your commitment and your passion uh, for attending conference, uh, traveling uh, for several hours. So um, you are all doing uh, an incredible job in growing uh, the local communities day by day and it's always a pleasure to finally meet uh, all of you at least once per year. I would also thank uh, all the colleagues uh, and friends from uh, the Board of Directors uh, that are plus or more randomly sitting here, <laughs> uh, the membership committee, uh, the team, uh, because during uh, the last year we worked uh, extensively for making the project uh, and the foundation itself not only the home of LibreOffice, but also a place that is uh, taking care of its community needs. We interact uh, extensively uh, with other communities, like, for example, uh, OpenSUSE and Fedora, sharing experiences, feedback, and success stories. During the last two years, the board uh, was also drawing uh, the key concept uh, of the next uh, Decade Manifesto, working, for example, uh, to a carbon policy for uh, uh, lowering uh, our car carbon footprint as global project uh, uh, with members from all over the world. Uh, another topic, not immediately uh, connected with the code development, but required for uh, keeping our community in a healthy state, uh, is the decision to include some uh, uh, diversity and inclusion metrics uh, in uh, uh, every new initiative, uh, adding also an extra budget for improving the process, uh, the, the progress process of making uh, our community more diverse uh, and open. As you all know, the Document Foundation doesn't include only LibreOffice. The Foundation is the home of the Document Liberation Project, uh, that is a sister project created uh, with the aim to provide access to legacy file formats, all documents and content, uh, with the creation of import and conversion filter reusable not only by LibreOffice, uh, but also by other software. Always for uh, guaranteed independent access to documents without a vendor lock-in, uh, TDF started the COSM project and the ODF uh, Advocacy Open Project for making uh, open document format a real independent alternative to other file format. The board was also working uh, to a proposal for improving our sustainability and Simon will share the details uh, uh, with uh, all of you for collecting feedback uh, and other ideas, keeping our community always uh, as uh, an active part of the decision process. Uh, please don't hesitate to uh, directly contact us uh, for any need, feedback or crazy idea that could pop up uh, on your mind uh, during the conference. Last but not least, uh, thank you uh, to all the local uh, organizers and sponsors uh, that are CAB, Collabora Productivity, um, Atfinis, CIS Group, uh, OpenSUSE and Red Hat for making our annual meeting here in uh, Almeria. So enjoy the conference, have fun and happy hacking. Thank you, Marina. 
Ahora tiene la palabra Florian Effenberger. So, welcome also from my side. This is the ninth year that we have LibreOffice, so we're heading towards a rather big anniversary. And it's always a big uh, honor to, to open a conference and see all those faces. So let me join in what Marina has said, that I'd like to reach out my thanks to all of you who came here, who took a long travel, long flights, who have a, a, a language barrier to cross. I think that's, that's not easy. I really respect that you, you take the burden. For us, it's easy. We're in Europe, and we take a flight, and we somehow get along. But if you're from further away, it's really challenging. And the fact to see many of you again year by year, that leaves a really good feeling. And I'm, I'm really happy to have all of you. And it's the, the LibreOffice conference is always a community meeting to me, where we, we all gather. We are a big community with very different personalities with individuals, but in the end, we all have an equal share in that community. So we need all of them. We need the, the, the volunteers investing their, their skills and talent into the project. We need the ecosystem dedicating time and money and pushing things forward. We need the donors that, we, uh, that, that support us day by day with their donations and make TDF possible. We need the users because without users, whatever we do is void. And there are so many other people that the conference organizers I'd like to highlight. It's really a challenge to run a conference. And uh, you, you see a bit of the work that is going on, but I can assure you that there's lots more going on in the background. So there, there are many individuals contributing to this one community, and that's the spirit I'd like to, to continue working in. That's, I think, the most important asset that we do have, apart from all the, the code and the donations and, and other assets. That spirit of working together is probably the most important, the most challenging thing we have to face. And I'm looking forward to a couple of conference days exactly in that spirit, talking to many of you, exchanging thoughts and ideas. And uh, I wish all of us a, a great time here in Spain and hope that this, as each year this conference will be the best ever. That's the, the goal we ever uh, had so far. And uh, I'm, I'm sure we can keep up with that. So thanks a lot to everyone involved. I'm sure I forgot a, a dozen of people. But uh, thanks to, to all of you who contribute time, money, passion, energy into, into all that. Because we, without each of you, we wouldn't be where we are at today. I think that's, that's very important to know. So thanks for that. Looking forward to a great conference. And uh, with that, happy to hand over then, I think, to Italo. Thanks a lot. A continuación tiene la palabra Italo Vignoli. Ok, uh, solo como uh, ejemplo quería donar y uh, e e reingresar las personas de la organización local en español. Uh, yo cuando hablo a las conferencias en el mundo, uh, um, Voy a hablar en, la, en, en el idioma local, no es mi idioma, eh, me, pero esto creo que sea un uh, invito a todos los otros a hablar inglés, eh, porque eh, tenemos que una, una lengua común es el inglés, no es una un, cual cosa que hemos decidido nosotros, eh, esta es la historia que lo has decidido, y como inglés... Español no es mi, uh, mi idioma, ese siente, <risa> como eh, mi idioma es italiano normalmente, eh, pero esto es un invito a todo el mundo a hacer un esfuerzo a hablar la, el idioma de la comunidad, y el idioma de la comunidad es inglés. So thank you to everyone, uh, you will hear me inviting you to speak English every time you will meet me. Uh, because that is the only way where we, we can grow the community. I will talk about the, the community and the, 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 the global reach of our community afterwards. Uh, so uh, please uh, do not hide behind the fact that English is your not, not your native language, is not my native language. Is not, I think that apart from Mike and a few others in this room, uh, English is the native language of a tiny minority of people in this room. So um, 
let's uh, try to communicate. And uh, as I always say, if um, uh, an Italian can speak when he's seated, but you don't have to block his hands because we speak with the body. So if you don't find the words in English, speak with your body. Okay? Thank you for coming. And uh, uh, I, I also uh, expect a, a beautiful conference with you uh, during the next three days. Bueno, pues sin más ya queda inaugurado oficialmente este Congreso LibreOffice 2019 y transmitiros que disfrutéis un poco la ciudad, que hagáis hueco para disfrutarla, aparte del programa de trabajo que tenéis y daros las gracias por el esfuerzo que supone venir hasta Almería para la mayoría de las personas. Almería está en una esquina de España y España es una esquina de Europa y, y bueno, repetiros nuevamente las gracias. And now, as usual, we uh, start the conference uh, by calling on stage uh, the uh, first the board of directors. So, uh, no, sorry, first the organizing committee people. Uh, there's no, no one from the organizing committee here? No, uh, we, we, we move it after, that's not a problem. They're just out. Yeah, no, but let, 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 let's, uh, let's wait just a second. We have time. Okay. You're the only one from the organizing committee. Don't be shy. No, uh, um, everybody has been uh, is, is at the reception desk. They are uh, doing the preparations. Okay. So, in, in, in their name, uh, thank you very much. Uh, as as uh, Jose Antonio has been said, is, is Spain is a, uh, Almeria is in a corner of Spain, and Spain is in a corner of Europe. Thank you, thank you, really thank you very much to uh, make the effort to, to, to be here. We are really happy. Personally, to me, uh, it's an enormous honor because I'm involved with open source maybe since uh, 19... 94, and um, precisely uh, Jose, uh, Jose Antonio Martinez was the, the, the guy who installed my first Linux distro. So to me it's very important too that uh, he has uh, inaugurated the, the, the conference. So as I said, please enjoy the conference, please enjoy the, the campus, uh, we are for whatever you could need, uh, and as Jose Antonio said too, please enjoy the city. In that sense, we are going to make two, uh, two visits uh, on Friday and, and Saturday, and let's see how the weather is. Vitor, uh, Vitor, uh, Today for the beach party, so don't have many big expectations because this is the first cool day in Almeria in months, maybe from May. So <laughs> I'm sorry, but the, the weather the, not always uh, accomplish uh, the past, the agreements. So thank you very much, everyone, and thank you very much, the Foundation, for trusting us. Thank you to the organizing committee. Uh, just as a note, um, your picture on social media is uh, the 1994 picture, so you should update it. <laughs> not really, not really, not really. <laughs> you should, you should uh, check uh, my Facebook one. This is uh, with nine years old. <laughs> Almost 40 years. <laughs> okay, we're just joking. Next uh, is the uh, board of directors. So if uh, some people do not know board of director uh, members, there is an opportunity uh, also 
uh, if you want to uh, ask them uh, questions or ask them uh, uh, make uh, uh, suggestions uh, uh, or otherwise I don't know so you have Marina Marina she's the chairwoman uh, Bjorn is the deputy chair then we have Michael Mix uh, uh, Thorsten Berens, Eike, Core, and Franklin. And then we have the deputy, our Jan, uh, Simon, and Osvaldo is uh, unfortunately missing uh, because of health issues. So this is the board of director of the Document Foundation. Uh, I mean, if you have questions, it's a good opportunity, otherwise, uh, Otherwise, this evening with a beer. Okay. Beer is a, is a question facilitator. Okay. So, pictures, no questions. We go to the next one. That's the membership committee. So, people in italics are not here for uh, different reasons. And uh, we have Gabriele Ponzo, who's the chairman. Then we have Gustavo from uh, Brazil. Uh, uh, I forgot to say, but for instance, the board of directors represents uh, at least two continents. Uh, there is a majority of Europeans, but Franklin, of course, uh, is from Taiwan. And uh, many different European countries are represented in uh, the membership committee. This is more global because we have uh, represented South America, we have represented Asia. Ahmad is not here but is Indonesian. Muhammad uh, is uh, Turkish. Uh, Yona is Albanian. Uh, Dennis, where Dennis? <laughs> young people, young people are always late. <laughs> so I'm 65 and I get up at 7 a.m. and the young people get up at 10. I don't know why. <laughs> I was looking for him. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Ilmari. Uh, Ilmari is from Finland. And uh, they are the guys that uh, filter your uh, uh, membership request. And uh, I think uh, I, I have a request uh, on their behalf. Um, when uh, you make your application, don't be shy. Add uh, what are you are doing, uh, uh, because, and, and maybe add uh, details, because the problem is that in, in, otherwise they have to dig into mailing list, and in some cases, it's not easy. For instance, you will see when uh, we will uh, uh, show them the people contributing to AskBot, most of them uh, are behind a nickname and uh, when you are behind a nickname it's very difficult to, to and there are funny nicknames uh, so it's very difficult to understand who you are so when you, uh, you, you place your application spend just five minutes more provide say my nickname is this one I contribute to AskBot I contribute to this I filed 10 bucks I commented 20 bucks you will find this and make examples. This will make their life easier. Otherwise, their life is going to be complicated. And in addition, uh, we have the right of having our own name, of course, uh, which is in our own language. Uh, in, for Europe, it's easy because we have a Western culture. But if you are from Asia, uh, believe me, uh, it's difficult to associate your name. Of course, uh, Naruiko it's, has been here for ages, so it's easy to associate Naruiko with a, with a face. But for other people, believe us, it's difficult to associate the name with a face. So provide ins that allow uh, them to better or quickly understand who you are. Their, their task is to approve members, is not to uh, chase members. Okay? I just want to add something. Um, uh, as uh, wow. as Italo said, it, it is not 
about being shy. I mean, we are not asking what you do, what, you, um, what, what are your contributions to the community, to the projects, not just because you have to show how strong you are or something like that. So the Mishai, it, it, we need that kind of stuff to, uh, to approve your application. And for those on the other side, uh, we will have a talk um, tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, we will act, we have a talk tomorrow about you know the membership committee and the role of the membership committee. So we will be deeper in that moment. But just a hint, just a, a quick note is uh, sometimes it happens the opposite. So people are asking, uh, telling us uh, why should I provide every time all the details of, about what I'm doing uh, if I am already well known and you already know me, and so on. Well, uh, given that the statutes are, let's say, guiding us to do something, and we have to follow them. But anyway, we are studying a way to, um, to do it easier, especially for the renewal process. So we, we hear you, and so we heard this um, need, this requirement, and we are trying to uh, improve our processes. But, or not but, moreover, we are ob obviously open to any suggestions. So if you have any, please reach us and, and, and tell us what could be a better way for, for us to, to proceed in the process of approval and, uh, uh, and renewal of, the, of your membership. Thank you. Thank you to the membership committee members. And now the team. Uh, so we have Florian and uh, we have Sophie. Everyone knows Sophie, so I don't think you need to present Sophie. Then uh, we have uh, Chris Clough. We have Christian. But I, if I say we have Christian, no one says, well, who is Christian? So Christian is Clough. Uh, then we have Cisco, who's the local guy. He's the only one that drove to Almeria. Then we have a new face. We have Ilmari. Ilmari uh, has started to be a team member uh, since a, a few weeks, uh, and he will be responsible for uh, uh, increasing. Uh, the, the, the development community, to facilitate the development community. Uh, I think uh, many people have seen a couple of messages about teams, development teams, uh, during the last uh, blog post uh, about development teams. Uh, and uh, I think this is something that Ilmari will uh, increase during the next month. Uh, have, uh, people uh, work together in uh, development teams to uh, solve bugs or develop new features or uh, uh, go in um, and, and look for uh, volunteers in other areas where we have not been active uh, so far. So if you want to contribute to LibreOffice and you don't know where to start from, I mean, if you want to contribute code to LibreOffice and you don't, don't know how to start for, just poke Ilmari. Then we have GM. GM is our infrastructure uh, manager, engineer. I don't know how to uh, to, to describe master. that. Master, yeah. Master. Uh, then we have Olivier for documentation. Heiko for the user interface. So send. The useful suggestions to ICO, not just complaints, please, about the user <laughs> interface. Saying, uh, I don't like it because I don't like the colors of the icon, it's just useless. Because for one person that doesn't like the color of some icons, there will be one million person that like those colors. So it's, uh, uh, this is something, so work with ICO for, to improve the user interface, which has improved uh, significantly over the last few years, but I think uh, there is still space to improvement. Then uh, you have Mike uh, for marketing, uh, and uh, you have me for marketing. 
and for uh, piece, and you piecing you off uh, frequently on. You're supposed uh, to high five me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and uh, again, if you have questions, if you have uh, remarks, don't throw artichokes, uh, but uh, whatever. Uh, here, to don't throw tomatoes, of course, which are easy to find uh, around here. <laughs> No questions again, no pictures because we are not nice, so that's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Huh? Make the UI portable. Make the UI portable. <laughs> votable. Every time you start the software. Great suggestion, and we are looking for development volunteers. You're welcome, and uh, we are happy to get you. <laughs> okay, uh, and now some. Uh, I have some housekeeping information. Thank you. You can go we back. Can go. Uh, yeah, <laughs> done with us. Yeah, I'm the one that is uh, sticking here until uh, lunch. So some general information, uh, some of this you have already seen uh, in, in, various, uh, in various areas. So the conference agenda and venue map are on the conference website. We have tried to make it uh, readable from mobile this year. Uh, let's say that the result is a mixed one. Uh, we are, for next year, we are uh, evaluating software to make it easier to produce a, a, a manageable uh, schedule. So uh, please uh, check uh, the schedule uh, uh, for the day every, at the end of early the day because there might be some uh, last minute changes. Unfortunately, we are uh, receiving emails from people that cannot attend, uh, people that is re um, speakers that are replaced. Uh, so uh, for today, there's no changes, but for tomorrow, I anticipate there is a small change uh, check tomorrow morning uh, about the, the, the schedule. Uh, we have already asked all uh, speakers about the pictures and the videos, uh, but we uh, will take pictures and uh, uh, probably y you might end up in a, video, in a piece of video uh, if you are participating to the conference. So if you really do not, we, we will be not using the picture, we will not be selling the pictures. Uh, uh, frankly speaking, there's no one that's uh, beautiful enough uh, to, uh, to, be, uh, to, to have his pictures uh, paid for. Uh, so, uh, and I'm the first one, so not, no, no problem. Uh, so we will use the pictures only in uh, TDF blogs uh, and Twitter. So, but if you, we appreciate the fact that some people do not want to be uh, portrayed in pictures. So if you really do not want, please uh, tell uh, Mike or me and we will uh, make sure that your picture is not published. Okay, uh, we will uh, publish the pictures, of course, as small selection on the annual report. If you have food-related issue that you have not anticipated before, please tell us. Uh, we hope uh, that you, we, we know everything, uh, but ne you never know. You, must have, you may have developed an allergy during the last three days, so uh, tell us in case. Maybe you, are, uh, you have an allergy to Almeria tomatoes. Uh, you never know. A very specific allergy. <laughs> and uh, all the speakers, remember to send the slides uh, for publication uh, on the website uh, either to Sophia or to me. Uh, please remember the speakers that are in room three to show up, uh, as I wrote yesterday, to show up uh, with a USB key with a PDF uh, uh, presentation because uh, the, for security reason, uh, the PC in that room uh, has no video connection available. So we have to use the PC 
and uh, to be sure that uh, slides are, uh, can be uh, projected, uh, the best format to use is PDF. Uh, another thing that has to do with, uh, uh, with, with uh, uh, you being thirsty, this uh, water fountain, and uh, there is a water fountain in the, other, in, uh, in the lobby of Aulario Quattro, uh, this uh, is drinkable water. They have, they gave us uh, bottles to use. Uh, uh, if you, if you need to, if you have to drink, you can uh, freely use this. Uh, lightning talks. Uh, there is a lightning talk session on Friday at 2:30 p.m. here. But do not show up with your pictures, uh, with your slides at the last minute. So if you want to show slides, uh, you send them to Tosten at least one hour before. So on, by Friday 13 at 1.30 p.m., so before lunch break. After the conference, send the same slides to Sophie and me because just to be double sure that we get them and we publish them. I mean, I can ask them to toss them, but to be completely sure, resend them uh, either to Sophie or me. Communication channels. Uh, there is a Telegram group. It's, uh, uh, that is the name of the group. Uh, it's a public group. There is a broadcast channel. Uh, and uh, there is a main list, conference at globallibreoffice.org. We will try to spread messages on all channels, uh, but of course, given the, their nature, it's easier to use. Uh, oh, we are in a disco now. Uh, I, I, I will, I will uh, refrain from singing and, and, and dancing because that's not a nice. Um, would not would not be a nice. Uh, <laughs> so it looks like uh, uh, either the, the room thinks that I'm a singer or uh, because it looks it's has started automatically. Fantastic. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, in, in any case, it's going to be easier for us because we can use our, uh, our mobiles to send messages to use the Telegram groups. Uh, so we will try to use the mailing list as well, uh, and, but uh, the main communication channels will be Telegram. And that was to anticipate the annual report. Of course, it was bells and whistles. So the annual report has been published. There has been a, a, a blog post. Uh, these are, uh, this is where uh, you can... It's, uh, it's been loaded on, uh, on the website. Uh, these are the, the short link uh, to download it. Uh, low resolution is seven megabytes. High resolution is 50 megabytes. The, of course, only the resolution of pictures is changing. And then uh, you can download the original report in German, uh, which is in a text format. The authorities do not, get, do not want fancy graphic. Uh, Three images from uh, the uh, annual report, which I think uh, uh, can update uh, your, uh, your idea about TDF. Uh, these are not updated. The, I mean, the data are referring to 2018. So they are not, the data I will show afterwards are updated to August 2019. The data about the annual report are referring to the year 2018. So, these are income sources. Uh, as you see, uh, we have a, a, a huge majority of donations, 66% uh, through PayPal, 30% uh, through uh, Stripe, uh, which is our credit card handler. We, we changed uh, that company last year. 2% are through SPI. SPI is software in the public interest. Uh, is a US-based uh, 503C uh, uh, um, kind of organization. 
So uh, donations through SPI are tax deductible in the United States. Um, and uh, that's also uh, the only uh, way we can accept donations uh, uh, by checks. Uh, we, we receive uh, a periodical requests of uh, uh, getting donation by checks. Unfortunately, uh, bank transfer and conversion uh, percentages are just uh, uh, outrageous on checks. Uh, uh, so uh, I think uh, we, we made a, uh, the, the last one uh, we made a calculation on a 35 dollar. Uh, check uh, we uh, TDF uh, at the end of, uh, of of a lengthy process would get not a lot more than 10 euro uh, and all the rest would stay with the banks so we decided that we don't simply cash checks because it doesn't make sense it's it more cost uh, than than benefit uh, so we we uh, uh, direct people that want to uh, donate with checks to SPI, especially if they donate with dollars, because SPI has a way of cashing checks which is less expensive that we have, that we do. Then these are TDF expenses. Uh, um, so as you see, there is a majority for uh, the uh, team cost. Unfortunately, we have to pay our bills at the end of the month like everyone else. And uh, if we work full or uh, uh, semi full time for TDF, we, we have to be paid. 7% uh, for community and events, 19% uh, for projects and tenders. Then there are other expenses. Other expenses are uh, uh, infrastructure or hardware uh, purchase. Uh, we have also 3% depreciation as we uh, have asset that, of course, uh, depreciate year, year over year. And last one is the uh, geography of uh, LibreOffice community or TDF community. In, uh, um, Dark green uh, are the countries where we have members. In light green uh, are the countries where we know that there is some community related activities. Unfortunately for several or many of these countries we do not uh, have uh, uh, real insights. In some cases we, we, we find names in mailing lists that mention LibreOffice or uh, we, we find name uh, that of people that is, uh, says I'm using LibreOffice, uh, but of course, of course we would like to get more uh, information about that. Uh, and uh, we definitely would like uh, to uh, make, uh, for instance, Africa greener than it is, uh, or uh, with, with more dark green uh, than today. Uh, because uh, uh, we really would like uh, to, uh, to have an increase of members in areas where uh, uh, free software is meaningful because it's uh, not only bringing the ethics of free software but also the economics of free software can be an advantage. Uh, of course, uh, the, uh, this again uh, is the situation at the end of uh, 2018. Uh, the situation today might be slightly different. Uh, uh, for instance, we don't have any more a member in the uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, and, uh, but that it's, uh, the changes are really, really minimal. Uh, what I'm what I'm happy to see is that, for instance, Asia that was uh, uh, light, most, most of Asia was light green uh, uh, until a couple of years ago, is now most of Asia is dark green. Uh, uh, for uh, several reasons, I would say thank to, mostly thanks to the activity of Franklin and the Taiwanese team because they've done a great job. Of course, we, have a, we, we historically have a, a very strong Japanese team, uh, but uh, I think uh, that we, we, out of Japan and Taiwan, uh, 
we are building uh, a stronger Asian community. They, they organized the first uh, uh, Asian conference, and uh, in July we had the first South American conference. So the first South American conference was in Paraguay. As you can see, Paraguay at the moment, at the end of 2018, was light green. At the end of 2019, will be dark green because uh, people that have helped us uh, in organizing the event uh, will uh, be members. Uh, and, uh, but of course, uh, it's not only because they've organized events, uh, they are uh, working uh, actively, and if you want more information, you can ask uh, Gustavo or uh, uh, Olivier. They are actively uh, updating the uh, localization to Guarani. Uh, Guarani is a, is a language that is uh, uh, the, la the, the original uh, native language of Paraguay. It's still uh, uh, spoken by uh, I think at least 50% of the population in Paraguay, although uh, they, they, most of them they speak Spanish as well. There is a small uh, percentage of people uh, speaking Guarani also, I think, in Bolivia and uh, in uh, Argentina. Uh, but um, uh, I think that it's important to acknowledge that thanks to LibreOffice, Guarani is not going to be a language ignored in the technology environment. And we hope to see many of the, these languages uh, being added to LibreOffice because that is one of the beautiful things of open source software is that uh, you don't need uh, a large uh, company funding uh, the translation, the localization to one language. Uh, you need a community. So we have, uh, for instance, uh, a few representatives, and uh, you, will, you will recognize them because they are amongst the youngsters in the room. It are the Albanians uh, that are uh, enthusiastic. They, they have organized the conference last year, and they are uh, uh, maintaining the uh, Albanian localization. And uh, uh, we are happy, and of course, uh, uh, the city of Tirana, for instance, has moved to LibreOffice, and we hope to have uh, uh, other migration in the future. We know that someone in Andalusia is migrating to LibreOffice, uh, and uh, our ambition would be in the future to be involved uh, as a community uh, before in the migrations, because we as a community, we have a huge experience in different environments, in migrating in different environments, and uh, we can help, uh, let's call them newcomers in, uh, in, in the LibreOffice world, uh, to reduce the effort. We have seen uh, that at the end of the day, uh, issues in, when you migrate to LibreOffice, issues are quite similar. Yes, you can, uh, for instance, we, 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 we now know perfectly, thanks to people like Franklin uh, and uh, Eric uh, that have explained us uh, that in Asia you do training in a different way. And uh, we appreciate. And uh, we will involve them more in the certification committee because we want to have an inclusive certification committee, not a certification committee that does training as we do that in Europe. That we do training, we recognize that training is different according to cultures and we need people that is familiar with different cultures to uh, train people. And the same happens for migrations. So we know that migration uh, follow different patterns, but at the end of the day, what you have to fight more with migration is resistance to change, then you don't have a huge amount of technology issues. So uh, our ambition, again, uh, is to have people that want to migrate to LibreOffice to send an email and say, I would like to migrate to LibreOffice. Can we work together on this topic? This would be fantastic. I would kiss on the forehead the guy that does this. If he doesn't like my kiss, I don't kiss him, but I can cook pasta. I'm rather good at making pasta. So that's uh, the, 
the, the situation. And uh, now I leave the stage to uh, Simon, who will uh, make an announcement about this one, this stuff. Uh, can I go? Can we? Can I go back two slides? Sure. So um, we've, we've the uh, another sponsor banner has arrived. So the team is going to bring that up here. Um, could we go back to the to the the income slide? So, um, so this is where all of our money comes from. Um, all of our money comes from donations, and the board of directors. Uh, uh, noticed last year during I think August that the donations suddenly stopped and we have no idea why they suddenly stopped uh, we, maybe there was a, a problem with the donation page uh, maybe there was a, 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 a maybe someone sent a memo round to people who were donors I don't know but the money just stopped and that made us wonder what would we do uh, about sustaining LibreOffice if the money stopped coming in from donations. Now, there's a couple of reasons why the money could stop coming in from donations, uh, and the most significant one is the, uh, the rise of app stores. So on Windows 10, for example, it's very hard to install LibreOffice uh, if you are not a, a technical user. And if you are using the student edition, it's impossible to install LibreOffice except through the App Store. Um, so you'll notice on this chart that only 2% of our income comes through sponsorship. And we're very grateful indeed for the money that we get from our sponsors, but it, it really wouldn't pay for us to run for very long if, if we didn't have uh, donations. Um, so we, we've been trying to think about what we can do to sustain the, the uh, uh, LibreOffice project. Uh, we, we've been experimenting with new ideas. So we, we started a new idea two years ago that you might have heard mentioned a little. Uh, it was this project called COSM, the Community of ODF Specification Maintainers. We realized that um, it was IBM changed strategy and they stopped funding the development or the, the writing of the ODF specification. And so the community members were all still submitting changes about ODF, but there was nobody being paid to edit the specification. And so all these changes were not going forward into the international standard. And so we started a project at the end of 2017 to crowdfund the development of the ODF specification. Um, we uh, took some money from the Document Foundation to seed that from the donated money. And uh, we were using that strategy of matching donations, we were able to get donations from generous sponsors. Uh, the very first sponsor was actually Microsoft, uh, which I find, uh, you know, I've been, I've, I started doing this in, in 1999 uh, as a way to disrupt Microsoft's market. And uh, uh, we started doing ODF in 2001 to break Microsoft's lock-in. And so for the first donor to this project to be Microsoft was uh, a deep irony and actually a great pleasure for me. Uh, we also had donations from Collabora, from CIB, and then notably from the UK government and most recently from the European Commission. And that's meant we've been able to pay uh, for uh, a year and a half now for an extremely expert editor to work on ODF 1.3, Francis Cave. And I'm pleased to say that it, on September the 9th, the committee approved the draft of the new standard. So the email went out uh, last week to OASIS to ask the, the OASIS community to ratify this as a standard. Don't hold your breath, because the whole process of standardization could take as long as another two years, uh, even though we have the spec finished. But uh, we have proved it's possible to do something new, to crowdfund things that are important to us. And so that has inspired the board to deal with the second problem we have. Um, so uh, we would very much like to run, put LibreOffice in app stores. Uh, and we could do that. Uh, Florian is sure that he could run an app store activity if he wanted to. We're pretty certain he'd have a rough time doing it. Um, the challenges of putting things into app stores are, are quite great. 
Um, the, there is a constant churn. There is a constant battle that you have to fight with unseen rules, particularly in the Apple App Store. And uh, so um, uh, we, we, we wondered about uh, how we could go forward with doing that. Um, the conclusion we came to, just to, to sum it all up, is we think we should start a parallel commercial activity to the Document Foundation um, to uh, complement the work in the community and also to complement the work of our community members who have commercial offerings. Um, so we're going to start a new company. Uh, it's uh, going to have commercial activities that are complementary to the work that everyone here is doing. And we hope that it will also grow the market for LibreOffice by bringing in new users, by bringing in new uh, application areas. Uh, we're going to start out by making a loan from the Document Foundation to the new company so it can get started. And uh, once the company is running, uh, it will pay back that loan with interest to the Document Foundation and then will also donate its operating surplus to the Document Foundation. So this will be a source of income for the Document Foundation. Um, we're going to make sure that uh, there is no, what's called no beneficial owner. That's how you can tell a company is a not-for-profit company in that there is no person or, or, or entity that gets the surplus. Um, and we will make sure that if something goes wrong, there is a way for TDF to step in and press the big red stop button and start it all over again. Uh, we're going to start out with a small group uh, drawn from the board and from the membership to guide the, the bootstrap of the process. And then once it's operating, we hope that this organization will be a very lightweight commercial organization with a commercial board of directors that is not changing the whole time. Um, what we're going to do then is we're going to put, uh, we're going, with support from Calabra and from CIB, we're going to take the packages they've already built called LibreOffice Vanilla and we're going to simply call them LibreOffice so that when people go to the App Store looking for LibreOffice, it is there and it's available from the Document Foundation. And uh, the, this new company, uh, which we're going to call uh, the Document Collective, uh, will pay for the maintenance of the packages in the App Store so that we have full quality uh, 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 commercial activity as well as f the full quality technical activity that we typically have from the community. Um, and then we've got the challenge of how we spend the money. So what are we going to do there? Well, what I hope we will do is that we will um, add to Bugzilla the ability for members of our community to sponsor a bug or a feature that is in Bugzilla. So this idea, this is still a half-formed idea at the moment, but what we hope will be possible will be that you'll be able to go to Bugzilla with your credit card and you will be able to say, I will put 50 euros for the fixing of that bug that I hate. And we will then promote that bug to the Document Collective's website where other people can donate money to support the bug. And uh, the Document Collective will match every euro that is donated with money from the revenue from the App Store so that it's quicker for bugs to reach the level that they need to be fixed. And we will then, once the, bug reach, the, the, the sponsorship reaches the level that will pay for the fix, we will uh, create a very lightweight tender so that anyone in the community can be paid to fix the bug or implement the feature. Uh, so that's the idea. That's how we, we think we can, we can work here. Uh, I don't believe that this will detract in any way from the donation revenue at the Document Foundation. I think that what it will do is actually release new money into our community. It will also mean it's easier to get paid to work on LibreOffice. Uh, and it will also mean that it's easier for LibreOffice to change in directions that would otherwise require one of our sponsors to do something which is expensive and has a low return. Um, I told you all that. So, what are we doing? Well, we made the decision yesterday that we should go ahead with this. Uh, we've not actually voted on the board to make it 
uh, a reality. We've, we had a discussion yesterday, and we've said, yes, okay, let's do it. Let's ask everybody. Now we're asking you whether this is a good idea. Um, and so what Florian is going to do is he's going to place uh, a proposal document. There's a two-page deeper explanation of how this all works and these slides uh, onto the next cloud instance. And if you are a member of the Document Foundation, you'll be able to access that and comment and send us your comments. Uh, in particular, uh, we're wanting the group that steers this into existence to not just be board members. Uh, we're looking for, we've got uh, two or three volunteers from the board to steer it into existence. We'd like one or two volunteers from the general membership as well to take responsibility for driving it forward. And so consider whether maybe you would do that. Um, we will, uh, once we start this up, we will immediately uh, make a new arrangement for trademark licenses so that the Document Collective can look after the LibreOffice trademark in app stores. Uh, we will immediately commission uh, uh, the existing vendors, CIB and Collabora, to make LibreOffice packages for us. And we will then place the packages in the app stores as LibreOffice, probably priced at about 15 euros. Uh, because we've been testing for the last two years, or Michael Meeks and Calabra have been testing for us for the last two years what the best price is to charge in the App Store for LibreOffice Vanilla. And we think it's about 15 euros. Um, and we'll, we'll carry on experimenting and testing to see what the best price is. And what that will buy you is uh, automatic upgrades to your copy of LibreOffice until the next major version number. And then we'll ask you to, to pay again for the next major version number. Now that should, we think, match the general behavior in app stores. At no point are we going to take away the ability to get the code without charge from the, the Document Foundation. So if you are able to go download the binary that we have built, the same binary, and install it on a Mac or on Windows, you go right ahead. Uh, you can go and do that. It will be available every release. We hope that the releases will come out at the same time. So we're not taking anything away by this step, but we hope we are adding something that people kind of expect ought to exist and wonder why it doesn't. Uh, so that's the board motion, which you'll, of course, be able to read in great detail. Uh, please take a look at what Florian sends around. Send us your comments. And if you feel that you could join the steering group that's named in, uh, in the second bullet there, uh, please get in touch uh, with me or with Florian or with any other board member. Okay, and that is everything on that subject. And Italo, do you want to take the deck? Okay. That's your phone. Uh, so is that good? How do people feel about that? Yeah.